Hi, it's Gabe from All Star Telescope. Today we're looking at some of our favorite budget-friendly options to consider this holiday season. These are scopes that are easy to set up and easy to start observing with, and they'll let you get nice views of the planets, the moon, or the sun, and even some deep space objects like galaxies. Just enough to get you hooked, while still not breaking the bank. First up is the first scope. Here at All Star Telescope, we have what we call a no-junk policy. We have that because it's particularly hard to find beginner scopes that aren't also what we call hobby killers. Hobby killers are scopes that are so poorly made and difficult to use that they just end up sitting in a closet collecting dust never to be used again, and that makes us sad. Instead, we feel like telescopes should be tools to foster people's curiosity, not crush it. With that said, we feel like the most affordable scope that's still worth your while is... The First Scope 76 by Celestron. The First Scope comes with two, count them, two eyepieces. One lower magnification eyepiece for finding the object you're looking for and centering it, and one higher magnification eyepiece for zooming in on it and looking at those finer details. Because of its small size, the First Scope specialty is mainly the moon and observing its craters and seas. One thing I like about this edition of the First Scope is it actually includes artwork that shows different regions on the moon and their names on the base. As you can see, it's not just a tabletop telescope, it's a desktop telescope. So when you're not using it, it's also a pretty nice little decoration. Now even though its specialty is viewing the moon and its craters, I don't doubt that if you get it under some dark skies, you can get some pretty nice views of globular clusters, larger, brighter nebula like the Orion Nebula. Who knows? If you're looking to get even more out of your first scope, we also offer an accessories package specifically for this scope that includes two more eyepieces at different magnifications, a finder scope to make it easier to find objects, and a moon filter to cut down on that sometimes oppressively bright full moon. A couple of other things you might want to consider are a phone mount for attaching your phone to the eyepiece and getting pictures you can share, or a physical map of the moon's surface with interesting points and in the names of the seas and mountain ranges. I find this makes observing the moon's surface a lot more enjoyable. And finally, the best accessory, education. 50 things to see on the moon. Very handy little companion, guide you through things to look for next time you're observing the moon. Next up on our list of affordable beginner telescopes is the StarSense Explorer 114AZ by Celestron. Just like the first scope, it's a Newtonian reflector style telescope, but it has more aperture. And comes on a tripod so it's easier to use in the field, not just on a tabletop. It also comes enabled with Celestron's StarSense technology, which, when calibrated, lets you use your phone as a step-by-step -step navigator to find stuff in the night sky that might not be so easy to spot on your own. Speaking of finding, it includes everything else you'll need to get observing right away, like a red dot finder site for finding things even without the StarSense app, two eyepieces, a 10 and a 25 millimeter, and a two times Barlow for doubling the magnification of either of those eyepieces. Because it's a reflector telescope, it's got a lot of aperture for the money, which means it's good for observing deep sky objects like galaxies and star clusters, just as much as it is for observing the moon and even the planets. Also, for the same price as the 114AZ, you could also get the Celestron StarSense Explorer 80AZ. Same StarSense technology, same tripod, but it's a refractor. 80mm diameter objective, which means a little bit less light collection, but don't need to worry about collimation. So it's a bit more portable and a bit more grab and go. And finally, we have the Heritage Telescopes from Skywatcher. They come in two sizes, 130 and 150 millimeters. This is the 150 millimeter version. Being tabletop Dobsonians, they're very compact. And these are made even more compact by being collapsible. Wow. I feel like the Skywatcher Heritage tabletop Dobsonians are probably the best value in terms of how much scope and how much aperture you get for what you spend. Being a Newtonian style telescope, 
The collimation is adjustable. That's the alignment between the primary and secondary mirror. But once you have it aligned and collimated, it will give you a very crisp and detailed image and gives you lots of room to magnify deep on planets. The Heritage line of telescopes are manual only. They're not motorized or go-to, but they do come with a red dot finder sight, which does make it a lot easier to find objects and main stars for you to star hop off of. Because the Dobsonian style base is mainly built for use on a tabletop, it can be a bit tricky to set up in the field, but I do often recommend these scopes for people in apartments who have a small balcony, or for people with a patio and they just want to set it up on their table and do some observing from their backyard. The 150mm model is a little bit larger and less portable than the 130, but because it's larger, it collects more light, and it'll give you a brighter image for the same amount of magnification between the two, or it lets you get away with a little bit more magnification. Because of the large aperture, the Heritage 150 is good for just about everything. Planets, deep sky, lunar observing, but not solar observing. Because of the open truss tube design, it's a bit risky, even if you do have a solar filter on front. There's still a risk of catching stray light in there and possibly damaging your vision. So we recommend it for everything except solar viewing. Because it collects so much light and is particularly good for deep sky observing, you'll need a guide. How about 110 things to see with the telescope? It's a very well thought out book that includes places for your own notes and observations, sketches, gives you ideas for paths to take around the night sky, things to look for in specific seasons. I highly recommend this book. On the planetary and lunar side of things, I recommend a higher magnification eyepiece to the two included, like a 4 or 6mm Omniplossal from Celestron. It'll give you better high magnification views of the planets like Jupiter and Saturn, or of the craters on the moon. And for maybe capturing photos of some of those views, how about a little phone adapter? It attaches to the eyepiece and you clamp your phone into it, and it holds your phone nice and steady right over the eyepiece, allowing you to take pictures with your phone and share them with your friends if you have any. Well, that does it for our beginner price range recommendations. As always, links to all of these telescopes and accessories in the description down below. I'll see you next time.